Hello, so I'm here going through the Ring Central settings in the system. So here we are at the login at service.ringcentral.com. This will be your location for wanting to um, log into your account. Once you log in, you have an overview setting. The overview page shows you the recent calls that you've made, and there's some shortcuts over here. Now, I'm an admin, so you see admin shortcuts. Here's the uh, user shortcuts. It's slightly different because you don't have a reports page. Um, other than that, pretty much everything's the same. My goal here is to go over settings. So for you, settings is a button. For me, I have two settings, so I'll just go to settings. And from here on out, this is all the same. So we have your opening page. It gives shortcuts and whatnot. Click on your name. And I'll explain each one of those, of course. First name, last name is self-explanatory. Here you can record your name. You can decide to have a custom name. You can use text-to-speech as well, which if you don't have a, uh, if you have an easy name, then the computer can do that pretty well. For me, Deladuca is a little bit difficult, so I recorded my name. Uh, that recorded name is used in your voicemail and in your announcement uh, if you um, recorded it. Contact phone, email, mobile number, department, and under user hours, you can set 24 hours or you can set specific hours. So for me, for the purpose of this, I showed I set up as Monday through Friday, eight, showing my hours. And so I can have the system do something different and during after hours, and you'll see that later. Uh, password, of course, and then regional settings is where you are, what kind of, you know, do you want a 24 hour clock? so on and so forth. So this page is fairly simple. Phone numbers, uh, this is where you can find your direct dial number. So there's been a, a lot of questions on what is my phone number? Well, there's a company number. Right now it's 504-8810 and then their extension. And then you have your direct dial number, which for me right now is 614-636-4873. Uh, this is showing that my computer is authorized to use the soft phone. And I can decide to deauthorize and then, so if I changed out computers, got a new computer, you can deauthorize your old computer so it's not hanging around. Presence is primarily for phones, uh, physical phones. So I can't show you this right now, but if you had a physical phone, it would show the buttons that are on your phone. You'll be able to choose people in the list to show their presence, number one, and it also acts as a speed dial, so you can press the button to call them. Permissions is, scroll down a little bit, allow others to see your presence, so see whether or not you're on the phone or not, and then you can give permissions to people to be able to pick up your phone if you get a call. Uh, intercom is primarily for physical phones. So if you don't have a physical phone, you don't get the intercom. This is your conference number. Ah, darn tool tips. Here's your conference number. You dial the number, you give the participants this code, and then you use this code. And you can choose invite with email to bring it up an email. Now it's important to note that there is no schedule option at this page. So if you want to schedule a future meeting, you click invite with email and you have to copy and paste the text into a new calendar event. I've asked for a change of that and we'll see if that um, comes down the pipe here. Greening and greeting and hold music. So a user greeting and notice here, user hours after hours. User greeting is if somebody is calling you before it actually gives them any ringtones, it'll say, thank you for calling Thomas Deladuca, and then it goes on. Call screening we talked about in the um, meeting. So you can set call screening to on and people have to announce their name, uh, say if there is no caller ID or if the caller ID is not in the contact list. It's callers not or always. 
you can set up a connected message. The connection message is for when somebody transfers from the main number. And it'll say, please hold while I connect to, or connect you, you know, and you can change that message to a custom message or not. The audio while connecting. So this is kind of like if somebody, well, it's exactly like if, you, if they call your phone number, instead of hearing bring, bring on the phone, you actually hear music. So you have options for different music types or custom or none at all. Uh, I chose ringtones for the company. You have an option to change that. Some people might be confused if they're hearing music instead of ringtones, though. So it's, it's your choice. The default on the home hold music we've set up as corporate. None of the options are amazing, but if you want to try something else, you can choose here to uh, listen to other hold music and see if you like a better one. That's for if you put somebody on hold, the company still has a company hold music. Blocked calls are just that. You can decide to put in a phone number that you don't want to hear from. And once you put in the phone number and you click block, it goes down here. And then you can keep a list or delete them. You can also block all calls. So, or allow, you can allow specific area codes. So if they're not in a specific area, they can't call you. This is what the callers will hear. Your number is not available from your calling area. Or you can choose a custom message. Uh, you can call, block calls with no caller ID. You can block pay phones. On to the next, call handling and forwarding. This we've kind of talked about when you get a smartphone. So smartphones and soft phones automatically get called first regardless of what your settings are. I set mine to wait three rings before it forwards to my cell phone number. After the small cell phone for smartphones, you can put in additional phone numbers. Now, if you have a desk phone, your desk phone will show up here as well. So if I had more than one number, I can then move the home number up or down, depending on what you want to do. And then the option here down at the bottom, you can create ring groups. So if you have, for some reason, you have five phones, you can create a group to ring three of those at the same time, and then the other two sequentially. So you can do something like that. Uh, simultaneous is ring all the phones at the same time. Sequentially is one after the other. Now, for me, I only have one phone here, so simultaneous and sequential doesn't matter. Incoming call information is good for, um, you want to see the caller ID. You know, there's different settings here. Display call information on non-ring central phones or all phones. Play an announcement before connecting. There's a, quite a few um, settings you can set here. The call flip, it, we talked about. So, uh, notice here, let's move that up. So if I'm on my soft phone and I want to go to my mobile phone, I press star two and flips over to my mobile phone, calls my mobile phone, and I can continue the conversation. Messages and notifications. So your voicemail greeting is telling you, you know, what the voicemail greeting is going to be. Uh, because I've recorded my name, then the name here is, it, it's me saying it. If you don't record your name, the computer estimates how your name, text-to-speech, will work. After hours, you can have a different voicemail greeting and a different recipient, if you'd like. Or after hours, you can decide, no, I don't want to receive, you know, to take any messages at all. Uh, under notifications, by default, this is the screen you're going to see, the advanced screen. I have it set by default to include the attachment of the voicemail with the email. So if when you get a voicemail, you get an email in your inbox telling you you have a voicemail and you can listen to it right there. You have the option to add a cell phone, uh, also get a text message for any of these other items, receive faxes, missed calls, so on and so forth. Notice on received text messages. Now the soft phone 
can send and receive text messages just like chat. I turn off the notify by email for that service because I was getting notices on my phone, on my soft phone, and an email whenever somebody texted me. It was a little overwhelming. Uh, outbound caller ID is, there's several different options here. For your basic, for your phone or your soft phone, you can choose the main number or the company fax number, which again, your phone also is a fax, or you can choose um, your phone line. So I like the idea of having my direct dial phone line as the, as the outgoing caller ID. And that way people can call me back directly rather than calling the company and trying to wade through the prompts. Ring out is if you use the web to make a phone call. Ring me, I cannot actually explain that. I don't know that yet. I'm still in training. Call flip is when you decide to flip the call to another device, that's the caller ID you're going to see on that device when you receive that phone call. Uh, your fax number can be obviously your phone number. And then if you have any other soft phones, you can set it. And there's that. So for outbound fax settings, here's your cover page information. You can define your cover page and what you want it to look like different options there. You can send a fax via email by sending it to the fax, I guess it's fax number or is it the fax number? That I'll have to find out. And then these are the people who are permitted to send emails to the fax number. The lastly, I would show you the tools. Mobile apps, desktop apps, meetings app. This is where you'd get your smartphone. Um, I've kind of already mentioned that in the step-by-step -step guide, but the meetings app is one that you'd want to download if you are doing meetings. So download for Windows and move forward. So I hope this was helpful and it wasn't too boring. I guess that's it. If you have any questions, please open a support ticket.